This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the HP Omen 17, well, obviously, probably a gaming laptop. So this is the latest edition you can get, 2019 to 2020. It's January of 2020 right now, and this is the one with Intel 9th generation Core i7 and Core i9 CPUs, and full NVIDIA RTX 2070 and 2080 graphics card, Max P, as they're called, Max Performance instead of Max Q. So that's pretty nice. It's something that, it's not super chunky monkey, is it? It's not that bad looking. We're going to look at it now. So just to confuse us a little bit, the HP Omen 17 is what we have, and that has the NVIDIA RTX graphics. It's the higher-end model. Around $1,600 or so for an RTX 2070, a Core i7, 16 gigs of RAM, a 512 gig NVMe SSD, and 144 hertz full HD IPS display. There's also a 17T, and that is a lower-end model. Still Intel 9th Gen CPUs, but starts with a Core i5, and that has NVIDIA GTX 1650 and 1660 graphics instead. So we're looking at the kind of higher-end model. If you want to go all the way up to the RTX 2080, which is always a price premium, instead of 1600, you're looking at around two grand or so. Now, HP offers a couple of different display options with this. There's a standard 60 hertz panel. We have the 144 hertz panel, both of those being full HD. They do say that there's a 4K option. I couldn't actually find that one to buy on HP's website, but it might be out there. And they're going to have a 240 hertz display too, refresh. So I don't know that's a little bit overkill for refresh, but hey, it's a powerful laptop. It can handle it. So cooling, they have improved the fans on this. They have significantly longer fans. They have more air volume. The vents have gotten bigger, allow more air pass through. It had vents out on three sides, intakes from the bottom. And previous HP Omen laptops that we reviewed, they really got hot and toasty, which is not unusual for gaming laptops these days with six and eight core CPUs, sadly. But here we really noticed a difference in terms of not just surface temperatures, but the core temperatures on this. In, if you're playing some of the most demanding games like Far Cry New Dawn on ultra settings, then you can push the, the CPU temperatures up to around 93, 95. You might see one or two of the cores throttle on it. But for most games, most of the time that we found playing at full HD resolution, on a high or ultra, it actually didn't thermal throttle and the core temperatures were pretty reasonable in the low 90s to upper 80s. Yay that. And the RTX 2070 stayed pretty chill, a little cooler than we're used to seeing. In fact, usually that GPU will run around 70 degrees centigrade in games and here sometimes it was as low as 58. Wow. So that's a good thing. We have the Core i7-9750. There is a Core i9. It's the Core i9H. 8-core CPU, that's the non-overclockable version of it, and yeah, I'm, I think the Core i7 for gamers is pretty fine. And this is geared towards gamers because, uh, for example, the model that we have, and I think most of them are like this, are G-Sync, which is great, so you have nice match frame rates with your display refresh, but you can't use NVIDIA Optimus switchable graphics for better battery life. That also means that your battery life is not going to be good. Even HP and, you know, manufacturers always claim great battery numbers. They say about three hours of productivity and streaming video use. You get the idea, really. Yeah, and you're not going to game with this unplugged either. As you'd hope from a gaming laptop, it's quite upgradable. It's easy to take off the bottom, unlike some of HP's consumer Spectre laptops, for example. Ten Phillips head screws, and you're in, and you have access to everything. Two RAM slots, two SSD slots, M.2, and a two and a half inch drive base. Some configurations come with a fast 7200 RPM spinning, spinning hard drive. You could put a two and a half inch SSD in there, too. So for ports, it's a fairly large chassis gaming laptop. Ports are not a problem here. You have HDMI 2.0, you have DisplayPort 1.4, it's mini DisplayPort, three USB-A 3.1 ports, and USB-C Thunderbolt 3. Ours has Thunderbolt 3. HP lists that as optional. It'll always have USB-C, but Thunderbolt 3, well, I guess you have to pay attention to that when you're ordering to make sure that you get that. You also have a full-size SD card slot and gigabit Ethernet. You also have headphone and microphone jacks, too. For audio, we have Bang & Olufsen speakers, and they're pretty good sounding, actually. You know, as gaming laptops go, the audio is pretty rich and pretty loud, certainly, and it has Dolby X Ultra or virtual surround sound software. Uh, the net result is it's pretty pleasant to play with out having to resort to headphones and the fans are not so loud even when you put them on max which is an option with the HP Omen software and you still can hear just fine. Speaking of the HP Omen software you've got performance modes you got the default performance if you choose the performance mode it does improve things like Firestrike went up a, 
on 300 points or so, for example, in that benchmark. And you can get up to 10 frames per second better in some games. It will run a little hotter. It pushes things a little harder, but the laptop can handle it. So I say go for it if you're gaming with challenging titles. Other than that, you can control the keyboard backlighting. The keyboard, by the way, is pleasant. It has a nice tactile feel, plenty of travel, 26 key rollover. Uh, I might like the SteelSeries keyboard a little bit better on MSI for Christmas when typing, but this is still pretty good. You have four backlighting zones, the WASD keys, and then left, middle, right. And you have on or off, basically. There's no star or wave pattern or anything like that. It's a Microsoft Precision trackpad with two clicker buttons, and it works very well. Like I said, opening it up is pretty easy. Ten Phillips head screw, there are screws. There are shorter ones towards the front edge. Remember that when you put it back together again. You can see there's lots of ventilation going on here. Use a guitar pick or something similar to work your way around the edges, and this lifts off. This is the speaker grill here and here. This is what the underside looks like. This is a combination of aluminum and ABS plastic for the casing of the laptop. And inside, you can see here's our 70 watt hour battery. It's not a terrible capacity battery, actually, but you know, given the fact that this doesn't have NVIDIA Optimus switchable graphics, well, that's why your battery life ain't so great. Two and a half inch hard drive right over here. We have a 7200 RPM, one terabyte that came with our configuration. Right here, you have two RAM slots, DDR4, 2666 megahertz. Uh, they even list being able to order it with 3200 megahertz. I don't know that there's much of a point to do that. So where are your SSDs? They are right here. Phillips head screw, Phillips head screw. For some reason, there's a metal panel. So you got to unscrew those all the way, and then you can lift this up. And there you go. We'll swivel that one out of the way. So this will pop up, watch that, when you put it back together again. So there's our boot SSD and another one here. So we got a really fast Samsung drive in ours. We had very good benchmark numbers on that. And you can add a second one yourself. So that's the HP Omen 17. It's kind of a sleeper, you know. I don't see a whole lot of cons consumer reviews on Amazon and all that sort of thing. But boy, it's a pretty nice laptop for the price. It obviously, it competes with the MSI GE Raider series. Like I said, the 17-inch models and the Seuss Rogue Strix. But it's got style in spades, you know. It's kind of Star Trek, but not like Boy Racer at the same time. It doesn't bling everywhere. The display on this is really good for a gaming laptop. It's good for any laptop. Honestly, I'm pretty impressed with the specs on that. And the keyboard is not per RGB. You might be a little bummed about that. But performance and cooling, that's really where HP has pulled ahead from their previous models. A lot of gaming laptops, unless they're super ultra, de ultra chunky desktop replacements, tend to run hot in the CPU department. And this one's got it under control, finally. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos, including gaming laptops, and hit the notification bell.